Everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. My name is Dave, and if you're new to the channel, welcome everybody. Today I'm looking at the Star Wars Titanium series General Grievous's Starfighter, released in 2006. This fighter was first seen in Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. So for a couple of fun facts, the actual name of this particular ship is the Belbalab 22 Starfighter, I probably butchered that, and General Grievous called his ship the Soulless One, and I think that is a really badass name. And finally, fans of Revenge of the Sith should know that Obi-Wan Kenobi escaped Order 66 in this vessel, so that's pretty awesome. Moving on to the size of this particular miniature, we're looking at just under 3 inches in length, which isn't bad at all. So everybody should know how my videos go by now, we're going to take a quick look at the mold, the paint, put on the stand, compare it to some other pieces, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. Alright, let's get this video started looking at the mold. Now I've been itching to do one of these for a very long time. The X-Wing Up Miniatures game has one as well, and I'll be taking a look at that shortly to review. But, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, just like in all my videos, I'm going to go over all the major sections of the vehicle, and then we'll get a nice close-up look to see those fine details. So, for the major parts of this vehicle, in the front, these two pointed sections are for sensors and scanners, very similar to a Y-Wingus sensor dome. So, that's cool. These sections here and here are triple laser cannons, and we're going to get a close-up of all of this in a few, but magnificent stuff. You can see the beautiful detailing coming down the top. Amazing. We have our cockpit, our vector fin coming down the back, engines on the sides here. Looking amazing. For the bottom, we have three screws holding it together. Copyright crap on the sides, peg port for the stand, and also landing gear. So let's take a quick look at that so I could shut it. Now having a quick look at the landing gear, you can see some pistons, we have a circle there for where a joint should be, and then the pad itself, and I had to get a plier to get these out, and for the longest time I didn't even know these could come out, so let's push this bad boy in, there we go, get it nice and flush, and then we have the other side, looking very cool, you can see where the glue was holding it in there, right here, which was the reason why I never knew they could move. But fantastic, nice and detailed, beautifully done, and we'll just slide that back in there. There we go. Oh man, I always love when they have moving parts like that. So that covers all the major sections of this vehicle, so now let's get that close-up look. Starting off with the close-up look at this vessel, we'll begin with the bottom section. We can see some beautiful molding right here on the aft. Excellent curves coming down to the vector fin. Nice recess coming down that fin as well. Pretty cool. That's the same for this side. Excellent. Come down, we have our screw. Some beautiful line work coming down the main body. Some excellent molding. Look at that. Fantastic stuff. Peg port for our stand. More detailing. And look at this. Fantastic. Really cool. I think that came out excellent. And then we have this nice little recess line work here. Looking good. And then a seam line. Looking at the gold, you could see how each one of these pieces has a recess line around it that separate them. And to me, that looks awesome. A little heavy with the black wash, but not too bad. Nice. Coming to the side here, we have another screw. Beautiful line work again. Check out back here. Fantastic. And then we have more line work and copyright crap. Looking good. And that's the same for this side. Fantastic stuff. And nothing on here is flat. Just look at this. Everything's raised up or uh, sunk in. It's just a beautiful piece. It really is. I like it quite a bit. One little problem I have is that the screws are raised up out of it, though. So, sort of a bummer. But coming around the front, just look at that beautiful design here. We got some recesses on the sides. 
excellent line work. The gold continues, and we have line work coming down the main body. So let's take a look at that. Fantastically done. Oops, sorry guys. Didn't mean to lose focus there. But great line work on here, and I'll turn it around for all of you. Fantastic. Then, of course, we have our gold looking good again. Same for this side. And then our wing or pylon, whatever you want to call this section. Beautiful line work yet again. Look at that. Fantastic stuff. Then we have our triple laser cannon. Looking pretty cool. And that gear mold right there, looking pretty dope. And that's the same for this side. You know, everything's basically mirrored on here. So there's no differences, and these are a little rubbery. Let me see if I can get that for you. Yeah, see, they move a little bit. But they're strong enough. I never had a problem with them. Then we have that gear, some more line work coming to the aft section. So that's pretty cool. Now, with the cockpit, the windows are a little recessed in there. Looking pretty cool. I wish the windows were painted, but what are you going to do? It's all one solid color. And then, back to our vector fin with some beautiful molding back here. Excellent. And now, I want to take a quick look at the engine sections. We've got a nice top view here. Here we have our scanners and sensors. Nice recess going around that, looking cool. Coming back, beautiful line work here. Some recesses coming down, fantastic stuff. And then the back is basically flat. It has a little recess coming down the center, but nothing too drastic. And now the side, look at that. Some little raised sections right here coming down. It's all recessed in. Fantastic stuff. We have our landing gear down here. Another recessed section with a half hemisphere. Looking pretty cool. And that does wrap around to the front section. Looking pretty good. I like this lip here. Excellent stuff. And then it comes to the side. There's our landing gear again. And it's basically smooth in here, all the way to the back of the engine. And that's the same for this side. No real differences here. You can see it's the same. You have that raised section there. Our landing gear, very smooth. Back to the recessed engine area, looking good. And just like before, beautifully detailed. I love this section here. Fantastic stuff. Our landing gear again. And then we have our front with the lip. Excellent stuff. And then coming to the front here. Beautifully done. I really like this piece quite a bit. Just look at all the curves. Excellent stuff. And that does it for the mold. Hopefully I went over everything and hopefully the camera showed off all the fine details on here. It seems like if a ship is really white or extremely dark, my iPhone has an issue with trying to correct it and I got to mess with the light and that messes with the focus. So hopefully everything turned out good during that section. So now, let's take a look at the paint. And now looking at that paint on General Grievous' Starfighter, believe it or not, this has about nine different colors on it. And I know it's hard to believe, but hear me out as we go through this. First of all, we have a nice metallic charcoal, almost a black for the main color of the ship. And you can see how the light reflects off every single curve and angle. Fantastic stuff on the sides and on the bottom. Excellent. I love the color choice. Now, is it 100% accurate to the film? I don't think so. I believe in the film Revenge of the Sith, it was more of a, almost a chrome, a dark metallic gray compared to a black or charcoal. But to be honest with all of you, I really like this paint scheme more than the movie. I really do. I like the black and gold. I think that's a great mixture. But moving on, the next color we have is a matte black. 
for the cockpit, vector fin, and landing gear. You can see how they really tried to match the color to the metallic charcoal. They really did. But when the light's hitting it up close anyway, you could definitely tell. From a distance though, it doesn't look too bad. Moving on, we do have some dark gray right here by the engines. That's on both sides. So that's pretty unique. And the gray is only there. Nowhere else in this whole model, which is kind of odd. Moving on, we have some metallic colors. First, we have a nice bronze scattered all over like wear and tear, war-torn, and I dig that. Very nicely done. That's also located on the bottoms right here by the scanners. All raggedy looking, and I think that's dope. Pretty cool. And, of course, on the inside, looking nice. Now, coming to the back section, we do have some right here and here. And also on the vector fin. It's a little light there, but it is darker on this side, so that's pretty cool. Moving on, just like the bronze, we have silver. And that's scattered all over the ship. In the front, we can see it mixed in here, coming down the main body. And back of the cockpit, looking really cool. It's over the engines. The wing sections, looking very nice. You can see it in the front here, looking pretty cool. I like this design here. I think that's my favorite. But all in all, pretty awesome. We also have a strip going down the vector fin, looking cool. That's on both sides. And the bottom, we do have some silver coming down the main body. Pretty nice. Now this brings us to the second largest color we have on here, which is gold. And there is two types of gold on here, believe it or not. It's very hard to see, but we'll talk about it. So the gold comes around here on the scanners, the main body, and these beautiful sections here. And this is where the two different types of colors come in. Now I know what some of you are saying, that it's a black wash or some sort of wash on here on every other one, which is sort of true. But if you turn it over where there is no wash, you can see it is two types of gold on here, and it's not the bronze. It's pretty unique, very nice. But that gold is scattered all throughout here, which is beautiful. It's also located on the sides. The bottom section coming down the center. And that's about it. I don't believe... Yeah, it's not on the aft section at all. And I really dig that. Now, next to that, besides the two golds, we have a matte gold for the triple laser cannons, which came out good. It doesn't necessarily match with the metallic gold, but it's a good attempt. And finally, you guessed it, the last color we have on here is a nice wash. As you can see, it's a little heavy down here, and they forgot to put it in the front. But it is there, a little heavy with the black. And, uh, you know, you really can't see where the wash is on the main body. At least not to me anyway. It kind of blends in with the charcoal. But where it really shines is on the gold. The two different types of gold. And I think that looks great. A little heavy for here and there, but on the whole, a very nice job. And that does it for the paint job on General Grievous' Starfighter. In short, I really enjoy this paint scheme. The dark charcoal and that metallic gold really go well together, in my opinion. And, you know, you can find all these little gold slits painted here and there. And it just pops with that dark main color. Sure, they missed out on the wash in the front here, but that's just one minor heat cup. And otherwise, perfectly painted piece. I like this very much. So now let's put this back on the stand, compare it to some other ships, and then we'll be done. And just like all titanium ships, it comes with a cool stand, peg it in the port like so. And just like that, everybody, you are good to go. And now for a quick size comparison with the titanium series General Griffiths Starfighter seen in the center. First, on the left-hand side, we have the P-38 Starfighter, really unique. And then on the right-hand side, we have the CIS Vulture Droid, very cool. And for an added bonus size comparison with General Grievous' ship, 
On the right hand side, we have the Droid Hyena Bomber, looking very nice. And on the left hand side, we have the Republic Y-Wing Starfighter. Some awesome looking ships here, and if you want to see reviews of any of them I did, check the links in the description below. And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars Titanium Series General Grievous' Starfighter released in 2006. Now, I wanted to review this ship for a very long time, and I'm glad I finally did. For the mold, it's very unique, nicely detailed, and it has some moving parts, such as the landing gears. For the paint, it's also very cool. Not exactly 100% accurate, but I love the idea of the dark charcoal, the golds, and all the other metallic colors. They all marry very well. And you can't forget, it does come with a beautiful stand to help it blend in with the rest of the collection. So that's all I have to say today about the Soulless One. I hope you all enjoyed my video. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to watch my content. It really means a lot to me, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.